2 begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the glory together on the next page. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. You see our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Holy Sign. You are the Son of the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. But first we're going to wait for Harold to pull up a chair. <laughs> Beautiful. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading from Scripture. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. The word of the Lord. Please stand and say together today's appointed psalm found in your Sunday bulletin. Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right and they put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they seek their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold their head of honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and hide away. The desires of the wicked will perish. Please be seated now for the reading of the epistle. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourself were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So he can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. 
I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confesses his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now stand and sing together verses 1 through 4 of hymn 556. someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down in the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, please give this person your place. And then, in embarrassment, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to your friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He also said to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or just your rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, and the crippled, and the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Christ. Dear God, touch our hearts and our lives. Use and inspire our souls and our labors, that only now your word may be spoken, and only now your word may be heard. Amen. Please be seated. Oh, you're just beautiful. What a sight. I do believe I'm going to offer this uh, late summer Labor Day weekend meditation starting, what else, with a quote from Holy Scripture. The Holy Bible, Psalm 133, it exclaims, Oh, how good and pleasant it is. The Lord has ordained blessing, life forevermore, life for everyone. And how good and pleasant indeed, in, case, in fact, how sweet it is uh, to be back here with you here at St. Matthew's following my absence since May. I couldn't believe it was May. I had to look it up. It's been so long. While I fought with a nasty case of cancer all summer, I lost some, a lot of strength. I lost a lot of hair. Uh, you know, goes with the turf. Uh, and because my immune system was compromised by treatment and daily doses of radiation all summer, I couldn't. I could not be here. I couldn't be here if uh, you know, no matter what, on, on a Sunday or during the week. I couldn't be in my spiritual home all summer long. But here's the thing. Here's the thing that kept me going. We were talking about this with the acolytes earlier. I knew that the church was here. I knew that the work of Christ was going on in this world when I could not be a part of that, at least the way I was used to, and doing ministry. I knew you were doing ministry in the name and the example of the compassionate Christ. It makes a huge difference. It's not just about us when we're here. It's about all those folks around us who are not here. It is an essential and important ministry for those who worship and can get to their parish. And I knew, I knew you were here in this house of God offering your prayers and not just for your sick rector but for your loved ones and for this whole world and offering to god your deepest inmost needs the things that only god can and will take care of in good time you were being the church and that's actually good theology because the people are the church and you who are the church kept faith alongside of our wonderful wardens who kept the place going our vestry our staff our acolytes Yay, they got to go back to school though this week. Ugh. And our readers, right? And our Sunday School Kids program leaders and our outreach workers and those of you who worship, all of you, all of you kept alive the gospel teaching of Jesus Christ that you just heard to keep open the invitation to all, all, all means all, by the way, who hunger and thirst for forgiveness and for hope and for inspiration, for a fresh start and for healing of this world and of themselves. You kept alive the teaching to be sure there was a place of honor, of honor and welcome to every soul at the Lord's table at St. Matthew's. Uh, that's a huge deal and it kept me going. It definitely kept me going. Now, you heard the words, you heard the words from scripture this morning that we are to be the ones who do not invite to our celebrations just those who can repay us somehow or who agree with us, or talk like us, or look like us, or make us look good because they're around us, or feel better. No, we're supposed to be the ones who welcome everyone, everyone to the heavenly banquet of food for the soul, and especially for those most in need of spiritual and physical nourishment and support, those yearning for kindness, a little kindness in this world, please, those uh, in most need of love, and of a sense of being equal to the person around them because you're no better. You're not better than everybody else. You're just beautiful, and so is the guy next to you. That's the message of the gospel. This is what Jesus laid out. This is what Jesus laid out in his teaching today. It's what you heard echoed uh, and, and employed by the one brave saint of, well, of many of our times, Martin Luther King. This is what he lived. This is what he did. Uh, and this is the teaching that will transform not only your own life, when you take part in that, in the way that you can do that, but it also will transform and heal this whole world. The more places like St. Matthew's bear witness to the welcome table of God, the welcome table, and not just inside the church, but at your lunch tables at school. How about that? And your lunch tables, where who you invite to eat at work with you, huh? 
and at your own dinner tables, at my dinner table, where we live out our lives. Do this, said Jesus, and you will be blessed. You, do yourself, but he was also talking to the human race. Do this, and you will be blessed, and you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. You don't have to get it now. It's really worth it down the line. One of the things I love so much about this church, and I thought a lot about, um, well, I was pretty much bedridden for a good part of the summer, and I felt joy. I felt joy while bedridden was knowing that, that that holy invitation was real, that we were trying to make that real here, that all souls, all of them are welcome, and knowing that each of us can extend that invitation, right? Beyond this church to others, through our lives, through our words, through our actions. Oh, how good and pleasant it is for the Lord has ordained blessing for everyone forevermore. Now, next Sunday, when St. Matthew's fall season, you know, just ramps into gear, we uh, go back to worship, 8 and 10 a.m. It starts up, our choirs. I've got to tell you, I've been, I was watching worship in the sun, on Sundays from my bed on YouTube. I don't know if you know this, but our worship services are on YouTube. Um, and you can look at them during the week. And actually, a lot of people, uh, world, world over, actually, and people who travel and can't be here on Sunday, they watch this too. It really hurts me not to see the choir in the pews in the summer. So the choir is back. The choir is back here next Sunday as well. And uh, we, you know, we register our kids for Sunday school. Our youth group runs again. Our adult program offerings begin next Sunday. I will talk a little bit, a little bit uh, about my my deep and uh, respect and my love and my sympathy for those who uh, have now, and that's several of you, or are going through uh, cancer uh, or similar situations right now. And, and uh, you get to that kind of place in your life and you realize how present the Word of God can be for you and how great a role it plays in sparking hope and in giving you some strength you didn't know you had and some resolve that you, that you surprised yourself that you could come up with and how welcome God's Word can be for just a sense of a peace of mind to wash me clean, dear Lord. You know, and let this stuff pass and let me be okay and centered in you uh, that it most surely provides whether you are in the prison of a prison or in the prison of prisoners of circumstances or illness that word is present to you in ways that you could not ask for or imagine holy words like you heard in the epistle to the hebrews that tony read this morning the lord is my helper i will not be afraid and you heard god's promise i will never leave you i will never forsake you that's what you hold on to. You heard those words today, and take it from me. Someday you're going to grab hold of words like that for dear life in the middle of the night or in the middle of the day when you're all alone, and you're going to find them wonderfully buoyant. You know, they're going to keep you afloat. The Lord is my helper. Indeed, I will not be afraid. Sure was for me every day this summer. Sure is right now. Uh, and so were uh, your uh, cards and your, your presence and your prayers and, um, and my family's support. And it's, it's just an amazing thing that God can knit together for us when we need it most. And though we all feel fear from time to time, right, and discomfort, there's nothing wrong with feeling those things. That's a, a God-given, uh, it's a gift that God gives us. We can feel fear in the face of our tough challenges. That doesn't mean we have to be fearful people. With God, there can be a difference between what you are feeling and who you really, really are. You're a person of God. You need not be afraid. Be trusting in God, your helper. Do not be afraid. We can still be faithful. We can still be hopeful and, yes, loving in the midst of our challenges because the Lord is our helper. Ah, but that's all part of the good news for next Sunday. Today, the word is how good and pleasant it is, and certainly for me. I'm so, so glad to be back and seeing so many of you here today. It's Labor Day. Why aren't you out hiking or something? You know, get out there. After this, get out there, though. You know, go have some fun here as well. And starting it off right here and now is a good way to go. I love this place, and I love what it stands for. And I love you who pledge yourselves to let God guide you to heal and inspire our lives and to spread the word about the welcome table of God where all souls can find nourishment and uh, where the promise of heaven, you know, is approachable and attainable and where your life and your labors may today be blessed and may you be blessed every day. And it's just beautiful seeing you here in the house of God. Amen.
Let us now stand together and confess the faith of the text of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only true God. We believe in the Father, God and God, the life and life, true God, true God, true God and our name, of one being the Father, to him all of each of them. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the cross of Christ. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and succeeded at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his king will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and His Son, with the Father and His Son, and His worship and glorified. He has spoken with the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, we look at the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world of God. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the whole world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth and together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Remembering Catherine, our presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop, and in the, the, the diocesan cycle of prayer, St. James Chapel in Burke Haven, where Bishop Hirschfield is visiting this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another the common good, especially in Syria and the surrounding region. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, yeah, yeah. give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. 
drug and alcohol or drug abuse, or love of someone who does. And we also ask for the safety and speedy return of those deployed recently in the armed services, the comfort for their families, and all who pray for peace. And we ask for assurance and blessings for those looking for work for their families, and for healing within ourselves and for those in our thoughts and hearts today. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, we command in your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, Lord, hear the prayers of your people. And what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the honor and glory of your name through Christ our Savior. Amen. Please turn now to page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, and let us accept God's unconditional forgiveness and renewal of our lives. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. But we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. The glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you.
here this summer. Liz, we want you back here as a permanent person in a couple of years when you're out at school down there. But our summer, all right, that's good, but, but Godspeed, and thank you so much for being the church out of the summer as well. And, um, and keep telling them how it's going to go. All people of faith are welcome. All people are welcome at the welcome table of the God who is the Holy Communion. And we offer to God a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and make with your vows to the Most High. The offertory hymn, which we will sing together, is verses 1 and 4 of the 435. <laughs> together in the great thanksgiving. The Eucharistic prayer is found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 361. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. (coughs) Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. 
On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask do your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia! that Christ gives himself for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
Also to Aaron Batty, our own Aaron Batty, for for filling in during the summertime when when Darlene's on vacation. You just do a beautiful job, and thank you so much. The closing prayer. <laughs> Let's 
she was this tall, she used to call this Father Bill's kitchen. <laughs> the Lord's welcome table. Let us um, pray together the closing prayer on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the blood of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now go forth into this Labor Day weekend in peace. Be strong and of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good, rejoicing in the power of God's Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us now and remain with us always. Amen. Omitting verse 3, let us stand and sing the recessional 437.